Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal is to help teams and individuals to do church and event production with excellence. Here I have the X32. In every version of this X32 console, even the M32 console, ship with a 32 input and 32 output audio interface that can be accessed via USB type B from the included expansion card. So if you look on the back here, this is the expansion card. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this USB type B cable to the mixer, which I already done here and then I'm going to connect the other end to my computer and I'll just go ahead and plug that in. The expansion card is not the audio interface but the expansion card is our link to the audio interface inside of the X32. So in the case of the default card in the console, we're kind of limited to this USB connection, but that's why this is an expansion card upgradable to other cards like Dante or Waves or other recording and playback cards that use SD cards or even SSD drives. So normally an audio interface is used to take analog audio from a microphone or instruments and convert it to digital so that it can be recorded into a computer. So an audio interface such as this Focusrite interface has great preamps to take a microphone signal or input from an instrument and convert it to digital for many simple recording applications. So this one has a single XLR input on the front and two outputs on the back. Audio interfaces like this that connect via USB-C to your computer are also great for output because they allow your computer to output audio via professional quarter inch or even XLR ports, where normally you have to rely on the built-in eighth inch headphone jack on the computer that is not designed to go into a larger sound system. So in the case of this X32, where we're using it as an audio interface, we aren't actually leaving the digital world with our audio. The USB cable is going to send all of our XLR console inputs to the computer for our multi-track recording. So the default card is installed into this X32. We have connected the USB cable to the expansion card and then to our computer. So now on the computer, I'm gonna to go to Apple System Settings or System Preferences. We're gonna click on Sound on the left side. And now on the right side, you can see that X USB shows up in our input and our output. XUSB is our expansion card in the X32, so it appears on this list. So through this USB connection, we can send and receive 32 channels of audio to and from this X32. But without some specialized software, we can only send two channels of audio to the X32. So normally the computer has two channels of audio, one left and two right, through the built-in speakers. Same if you plug in headphones or even connect AirPods to this computer. All you get is one left, two right. So with the XUSB selected, if you click play on Spotify or an online video, the audio is gonna be sent to one and two on the XUSB. So Mac OS X does not have any way of changing this output, but there are lots of programs that allow you to set specific outputs to specific channels. So let's set up to record our multi-track recording. Starting on our X32 console, I'm gonna to go to routing and I'm gonna tab all the way over to the left to find the inputs page. And here you can see all of the console inputs that are coming from our digital stage boxes. So if you have questions about the routing inside of the X32, I encourage you to go check out my routing videos for the X32 console. I've heard some really positive feedback from those of you who have checked out those videos and have really found value in them. The links are gonna be in the description. So this is the X32 routing input tab. So all 32 channels that are coming into your console are gonna do that right here. So I suggest setting up these four banks, one through eight, nine through 16, 17 to 24, and 25 to 32 as user inputs, which is what I have set up here. So now I'll go all the way to the right to the user tab, and then on the left select input, and here you can select all of your routing inputs coming from the stage boxes. The beauty of this is that you can change different things. So if you wanna make number one be a input, whereas two through eight, are going to be from the stage box. You can do that super easily. So however you decide to set up your inputs tab, we're gonna go over to the card tab and we're gonna select those same inputs on this page. On the inputs tab, your inputs are coming into the console. On the card tab, your inputs are being sent to the XUSB, which is the connection to the computer. So once our inputs coming into the console are now being sent through the card tab over to the computer, we're gonna go ahead and open up a program called Ableton Live, but you could easily use GarageBand, which is free with Mac, create 32 channels, basically follow the same 
ideas of what I'm doing with Ableton inside of GarageBand, selecting your audio interface, creating your channels, selecting your inputs, and then hitting record. So now inside of Ableton, I'm gonna to go to Ableton Live Preferences, and now I'm gonna click on the Audio tab. And now on my audio input device, I will select X USB. And now under the channel configuration, I'll click input configuration. And on the left side, we're gonna go ahead and select all 32 of our mono inputs. And now I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm gonna hit X to close out of this. I'm gonna click tab to go over to my arrangement view. And now I can go ahead and delete my two MIDI tracks. And now I'm just left with my two audio tracks. So now in the arrangement view, I'm gonna expand both of my tracks so that I can see all of the settings. And if you don't see what I'm seeing, then use the bubbles in the bottom right to activate or deactivate all of this information. So now I can see what's going on. So at the top of each track, we have our input selection. I'm gonna go ahead and select external input, and then I'm gonna select input one, and then I'm gonna select external input and input two on the second channel. So with external input selected, it's pulling from the USB connection from the X32 from channel one and then channel two for our second channel. So below that, you're gonna see the in, auto, and off, which are monitoring settings. So choosing in or auto if you wanna monitor audio channels through Ableton. And then if you select off, if you just wanna record and monitor outside of Ableton, this reduces latency, but I'm gonna go ahead and select in. So now for our outputs, which is, the, you see the word master, that is our output. You could select external out, we'll talk about that in a bit, but currently they're set to master, which is a big group of all of the channels that are all being sent to this master, which is down at the bottom. So now we can set the output here. I'm just gonna leave this alone. It's currently set to our headphone or our computer speakers. So if you turn the volume up while you're recording the multi-track, you can kind of monitor and see what's going on. You could solo channels or turn off channels to hear different parts of the track that's being recorded. I'm gonna go through and repeat this process uh, duplicating channels, setting their external inputs, all the way until I get to channels 32. Yikes, you know how when the cooking shows always bring out the final product that they like made before the show? I feel like that's what I should have done here. One interesting thing to note is that when you duplicate channels, you go to the in external input. When you click on the drop down to select the different input channels, you can type in the number, which is really nice. So I repeated this process until there are 32 tracks in my project with their inputs all set to one through 32. My monitoring information is already set and we're ready to arm the track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the bottom one at 32 and I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna go to number one and I'm gonna shift click and on the right side, I'm gonna click the little arm button, which is right beside the solo button. Now I use the little red record button in the top of Ableton and the timeline has started recording. Hi, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I think you can hear me. So at this point, we should be seeing signal in the tracks monitor of each channel. So if you don't see input signal, then go back and see what got missed. I wanna point out that we are recording all 32 channels mono, but if there are any stereo channels, recording both mono channels as mono means that they become stereo again when we play them back. So now we're gonna go ahead and reverse the process and play back this multi-track to the console from Ableton. So back over on the X32, we need to go back to the routing inputs tab, which is in the left tab, and we're gonna change all of the console input sources from their physical stage box inputs, our local inputs, or ideally you have user inputs, one all the way up to 32 set up here like we talked about. So we're gonna start by taking a photo of this page. I think I have enough cameras running here that we're good to go with my photo that I have. And once we take a photo, just as a future reference, then we can start changing all of our banks to be card inputs. So we're gonna go ahead and select card one through eight, card nine through 16, card 17 to 24, and card 25 to 32. This means that the X32 will pull all 32 channels from the card, meaning from our computer, from our multi-track. So inside of Ableton Live, I'm gonna go back to Live Preferences, we're gonna go back to the audio tab, and this time we're gonna select audio input device. I'm gonna select no device. And for audio output device, I'm gonna select XUSB. And I'm just gonna do that just to confirm that we don't accidentally have any rogue uh, feedback, any loops happening here. So now for our output config, all of our mono inputs are set. I'm gonna click okay. 
When that is done, go ahead and close the window. And now on each of the 32 recorded channels, so no input is selected for all of my track inputs and my external outputs are gonna be set to their track number. So now when we click play, we should see audio in the console. So if I find a spot, I literally see audio in the console on all four pages. So literally, just like we have live inputs and a full band on stage, we see audio coming into the console. So this USB connection is very useful. We can input and output 32 channels at the same time, but it's still limited to a connection with one computer. You can't send audio to the streaming computer as well as pull audio from the presentation computer via USB. It's, a, it's one connection, which is a really kind of a bummer. So check out the video link in the description if you'd like to learn more about replacing the default X32 card with a Dante card. Utilizing Dante, you can send and receive, like normal, 32 channels of audio to and from, but you can do it from a bunch of different devices that are all Dante enabled on the network, such as computers with the Dante Virtual Sound Card app. So thank you for watching this video and allowing me to be a resource as you seek to do church and event production with excellence. Check out these other videos that expand on what we've talked about here and I'll see you next time, bye.